Got it. We begin our Bible study this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We open up with uh, worship, time of worship, and a time of uh, singing our opening <laughs> hymn, which is, Speak, O Lord, Your Servant Listens, and just a moment for have that on the screen and playing for us, God willing. Continue on with our time of worship as we responsibly read selected verses from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I, I suffered, suffered distress and, and anguish. <clears throat> then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, Lord, I pray, pray deliver my soul. soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God, God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. <clears throat> when I was, I was brought, brought low, low, he saved me. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest. For the, the Lord, Lord has dealt bountifully with me. For you have delivered my soul from death my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice. And my pleas for mercy. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we come before you with that promise on our lips <clears throat> that you hear our voice, you hear our pleas. We cry out to you these prayers and petitions, both of thanksgiving, but also of request for those in need, need for ourselves and need for the world around us. Heavenly Father, this morning after the post-election, we lift up all those who have been elected to office. We ask that you will provide direction and guidance in their work, and in whatever they do, may it be your will that is done. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up all women who, who would choose, who would have, who, who have found themselves to be pregnant, that they would choose to protect the life of the unborn baby in them. And Lord, we lift up also these agencies who come alongside and help women who are in need. Crisis Pregnancy Center, Heartbeat Crib, Luke Clinic, Wellspring, that all of these would be empowered to provide resources for women at times of need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, be with our congregation, each one of us and those that are not here. That as we go out post-election, our discussions with our neighbors and friends would be filled with love and never, ever serve to inhibit our gospel witness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are in the path of Hurricane Nicole. We ask that you would guide it away from uh, uh, from, from imminent destruction on land and that you would work to reduce the damage, reduce its power, be with all those who will come behind and, and be part of the res restoration efforts, protect them, and especially be with J.R. and Sue, uh, keep them safe no matter what their plans are. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. Lord, Lord God, we give thanks that uh, Ron had good heart test results. We ask that you would keep him uh, healthy and uh, and able to be a part, uh, active part of all the things in this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. Lord, be with Richard as he mourns the loss of his wife and with his family. May the comfort of Christ's love and the resurrection be by him and fill him with hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. Be with our sister Ruth. Lord, grant her strength as she goes through chemo. Uh, may it serve to reduce it, to get rid of the cancer in her body. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Lord, our Lord, prayer. Lord, Lord, be with Jack, uh, grant him and Jill patience as they wait for the biopsy results and then wisdom for the doctors regarding further treatment. Uh, be and strengthen Jill as she stands by his side as a good sister. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, be with me. Grant me healing head to toe, body and soul that I might continue my work of being your under shepherd here. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, be with Joan as she is in hospice. <laughs> Uh, grant her your grace as she prepares to leave this world at the time of your choosing. Be with Reverend Art uh, as he processes saying goodbye to her. Lift him up and grant him your love and your strength. And we give thanks for our brother that he has had good heart test results. Keep him uh, healthy body and soul for life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for Sharon's return to health and that she is here among us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. Lord, be with Linda. Grant her continued healing from her operation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. Lord God, be with Rita's family as they mourn the passing of a nephew. May they know the comfort and strength and hope that is in Christ and his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Lord, our Lord, prayer. Lord God, be with Karen. Grant her relief from her back pain. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. Lord God, be with Gabriel. Uh, lead him and be with him that he might join us again here for Bible study. Uh, may he know Christ's love and fill him with faith and comfort and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. Lord. Lord God, be with Marquavius and with Malachi. Encourage them to come because this is your house and they need to hear your word. But help us to teach them how to properly worship, to focus all attention on you and not on themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord, prayer. Lord. Finally, Lord, we give thanks that you have brought our brother Mike into our presence. Grant him your comfort and your grace and your love. Uh, may he be fed by your spirit here in this place and at the other churches that he goes. And that pastor that he had the discussion with, Lord, lift up her heart. Grant her your grace and love and forgiveness. Uh, may they be able to mend fences. May they be able to see each other as brother, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, lift the heaviness off of my brother Mike's heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Lord, prayer. Lord. all of these things we commend over into your care, gracious Father, trusting in your love and your mercy for each one of us, and all God's people respond. Amen. Amen. We pray the collect of the day. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, 
Govern her by your goodness and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. At least you were here for the prayers, yeah. That's the main. Now we can really talk about God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are on uh, day three and uh, in our uh, Life Light Study Session 7, and uh, we're supposed to read chapters 19 and 20 in 2 Samuel. Feels like we're poking through here, but as you saw, the readings that were assigned for the first couple of days are meaty. There's a lot of stuff there. And I just didn't want to blow by it and get to the question. So we've walked through it. And we're going to do the same thing. 19, there's a lot of things there. 20, not so much. Um, but as we lead up, we need to get a good handle on where we're at. And where we were at before is uh, Absalom's coming. And he's plotting to overthrow David. And he's going to come to Jerusalem and take over. And David sets out and leaves. And on his way out, he's met with... Uh, various people that encourage him and strengthen him. One of those is a Philistine, former Philistine commander, and his men, they're going to fight with David. And also he's met with uh, some people that aren't so loyal. Uh, the guy named, uh, um, uh, what is his name? Shema. Huh? Is it Not Shema? Shema, but it's the other. Shema? Uh, huh? Shema, Shema, whatever it is. Uh, or is that who you're talking about? Well, I'll, I'll go through and get to him, I guess. Shimei? Yeah, the one that was throwing stuff at him. Yeah. Is that Shimei? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll get to him. I, I just haven't got to him yet in my notes. But anyway, so he's on, on the way out of town. And he encounters first Ziba, who is the steward of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was uh, Jonathan's surviving son who was lame. Ziba was supposed to take care of him. Ziba comes up to David on the way out of town. And he's got a camel loaded or a donkey loaded full of stuff. And uh, says, hey, here's this stuff. And by the way, Mephibosheth, I, he's back in Jerusalem. He must be aligned with Absalom. Sorry about that, David. But I'm loyal to you. And David's happy. And David gives uh, Ziba all of Mephibosheth's uh, inheritance from Saul. Um, He's also met with, uh, let's see. His name's here. Shimei. Yeah, Shimei. He's met with Shimei, who, uh, well, he gives David well wishes and blows him kisses, right? <laughs> Throws rocks at him and hurls insults at him. And, says you're happening because you're a murderer, David. You murdered, murdered Saul. And uh, uh, one of uh, <laughs> David's generals, Abishai, who's actually the brother of Joab, his general, he wants to off with his head. And David said, no, there's going to be no killing today. Uh, perhaps Shimei is saying this on the orders of the Lord. It's part of uh, what I have to put up with. It's my discipline, and I'll put up with it. Uh, David sends a couple people back to Jerusalem. He sends the high priest back, and he also sends... Uh, Hushai, one of his uh, uh, wise men, one of his advisors, to counter the advice of another guy, Ahithophel, who's the, uh, the father of Bathsheba. And Ahithophel's aligned himself with Absalom, not because he loves Absalom, but because he wants to get back at David. And then Absalom, uh, Ahithophel says uh, to David, choose some people, go after David right now, he's weak. Hushai raises up and he says, no, you know, he's a fighter. He's probably holed up in a cave. He's mean, though they're mad. We should, we should wait and gather forces. And Absalom listens to him, which is good because if he would have listened to Ahithophel's device, David probably wouldn't have fared very well. And then uh, Hushai, Hushai gets uh, word to David. Hey, this is what's going to happen. David crosses the Jordan at night and takes everybody and goes to a walled city and he holds up there. At that, as he's on his way, he's met by three different people that want to help him. Um, one is uh, an Ammonite who uh, would have been an enemy of David's. In fact, David fought against the Ammonites, but this guy has some respect for David, and he brings David supplies. There's another guy named Barzillia, the Gileadite. He was an elderly, wealthy man. He comes and helps David. 
So David gets help from uh, unlikely sources. He's not on his own, people are supporting him. And when it comes time to fight, we're pretty sure that he's able to gather people from uh, all over Israel are gonna come and help fight with him. It's not just him and a few men against uh, Absalom. And Absalom's coming after him, right? Absalom promotes a guy named Amasa to be his general. And Amasa has never fought a war before. And so he's a little bit of experienced, inexperienced. We see David as he's preparing, he's more experienced. He's got three generals and he divides the troops up among them uh, for battle, which is very smart. And the other smart thing is when they actually do fight, where do they fight? On an open plain? In the forest. In the forest. And, and, and this way you can say that this is God working through nature to help them because it makes it more difficult for uh, 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 Absalom's cadre, which is larger, to fight. And as a matter of fact, what happens to Absalom? Well, he got strung up in the tree with his famously long hair. Famously long hair, which tells you he wasn't dressed for battle. He wasn't wearing a helmet. And uh, Job can kill him pretty easy, and Job does. And why is that a problem? Why is that a problem that Job killed Absalom? Because David told him not to harm. Yeah, not to be touched. Don't harm him. And Joab does. But what happens as soon as Absalom dies? The war is over. The war is over. So could we make a case that perhaps Joab was not, not, you, you won't let me ask you, do you think, was he just saying, I'm not listening to David, David's crazy, he doesn't know what he's doing? No, I think he loved David in his own way, and he's like, I know he doesn't want to have him hurt, but it has to be done. Yeah, he saw this needed to be done uh, so that the revolution would stop, so the civil war would stop. Better than Absalom die, than a continued war, and possibly David die. I never thought of this last week, Faith, but when you were talking, yeah, by ending the war sooner, fewer people died. Yep. I didn't think about that until just now. So that by he you know, he was a veteran, so uh, a seasoned a seasoned uh, leader, and so in doing that, he 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 broke the rule that David said, but he probably saved a lot of lives. Yep. Is David happy about that though? No. No. Remember, there's a, there's a little uh, confusion over who's going to tell David the results of the war. And, and one of the sons of the priests, um, he wants to go really bad. And Joab said, no, we're going to send this Cushite, this non-Israelite. Because uh, Joab knows that this is not going to be good news for David. But the priest gets there ahead of him. He runs faster. But when he gets there, he thinks better of actually telling David. David says, what about the boy? He's like, well, I don't know. It's crazy. There was a lot of confusion there. And Hallmark Channel was on. And I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> And then uh, the Cushite comes up and he, sorry, Joe. <laughs> the Cushite comes up and he, he lets it slip. And uh, what might be the fear uh, when David hears this news? It didn't happen, but what would be the fear? What would be the fear? Of, what was Joab afraid? How was Joab afraid that David would react? They would kill the messenger. Yeah, it's exactly. Those, those that came and said they killed Saul, even though they didn't, off yeah. of their head. But David doesn't react that way. How does he react? Grief, profound grief, sadness. Yeah. Cushite, he, I mean, in the Cushite, he says what he thinks is God pleasing. I mean, may the enemies of my Lord, the King, and all who rise up to harm him be like that young man. But David uh, cries out, Oh, my son Absalom, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, my son Absalom. Well, that's bitter grief, isn't it? That is where we left off. That was the end of uh, chapter 18. Questions or comments before we begin in chapter 19? Let's start reading in chapter 19 and let's read verses 1 through the first part of 8. Get through 8, you said? Yeah, 8a. It was told Joab, behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people, for the people heard that day. The king is grieving for his son. And the people stole into the city that day as people steal in, who are ashamed when they flee in battle. The king covered his face, and the king cried out with a loud voice, 
Oh, my son, Absalom. Oh, Absalom, my son, my let's, son. Let's stop there for just a minute. I'm sorry. What is David doing? Grieving. Morning. Morning. Loudly, grieving and mourning. Who are the people that are coming back into the city? It, the people that were with him. I mean, his the troops. Yeah. And, and they're coming back. And what is their take on the events of the day? Well, normally after a battle is won, there's cheering and for the people coming back. But this is, it's total opposite. It's like they're coming they back. almost don't want to go in. They're, they're, well, on the way back, they're coming back joyfully, expecting to be a celebration, mm -hmm. right? And maybe the king, they're going, good job, well done, high fives. The king's not there, but they can hear him crying and grieving. And what does our text say? How are they entering? How do they feel? They stole him, but that's kind of like sneaking, isn't it? It is. Yep. They're ashamed. On their hands and knees. And They're ashamed. Covered. Feeling ashamed. They just won a great big victory, but they feel ashamed. What would that do to the heart and the will of David's soldiers? What did it do to the people that came back from Vietnam? I was thinking the same thing. Huh. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'll let you oh, no, sir. carry on through 8A. Then Joab came into the house to the king and said, you have today covered with shame the faces of all your servants who have this day saved your life and the lives of your sons and your daughters and the lives of your wives and your concubines because you love those who hate you and hate those who love you. For you have made it clear today that commanders and servants are nothing to you for today I know that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead today, then you would be pleased. Now, therefore, arise, go out and speak kindly to your servants. For I swear by the Lord, if you do not go, not a man will stay with you this night. And this will be worse for you than all the evil that has come upon you from your youth until now. Then the king arose and took his seat in the gate. And the people were all told. Behold, the king is sitting in the gate, and all the people came before the king. What was the problem with how David reacted? Basically, he was thinking for himself first instead of the people that warred with him, that were within his command. He's mourning. I mean, his son died. Is that a bad thing? No, but. At the same time, you can't make the other people feel guilty because they just yeah, he's we're fighting of, for him. He's the king of the country. And what, what about all, all of his loyal uh, followers or the people in the kingdom? He's saying, hey, you're going to lose these people. over. You, you lost your son. You're going to lose a nation. Mourning is not a bad thing. And, and, and mourning is, is, a, is, is a gift from the Lord. It's how we say goodbye. However, can there be a fine line between mourning and self-pity? Yeah. Yes. Uh, life goes on, and that doesn't mean we stop mourning, but we all have vocational responsibilities. So if I'm a father and I'm mourning the loss of my wife, does that mean I ignore the needs of my children? Yeah. I need to be there even more for them at that time. Yeah. And it's ironic because David should have remembered, remember back with Bathsheba and he lost the son, what did he do? He mourned for uh, so many days. The son died, and then he moved on. He wasn't doing this here. Good point, Al. I love that. But 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 there is a difference with his son. Remember what he said. He said, "I shall go to him, but he will not return to me." So with that infant that died, what was David's expectation in that eternal the life? The infant went to he to heaven. But How he doesn't say, think that of Abishai. Absalom. 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 Can we make a good case that Absalom won't be there? Yeah. Yeah. Because he wasn't practicing. He um, was. He was out to kill his own father. Yeah. He was after, and not just his the relational <laughs> things, but the Lord's anointed king. Yeah. All for himself. And that's probably adds to David's grief over Absalom is that he's lost Ralph's literally. Yeah. So 
So there is a fine line and David's crossed the line there. I love what you brought up about the, about the sun, his infant son though, that is very good. What about Joab's advice? How hard would it have been to be Joab? Really hard. You don't like to have to tell somebody something bad and then be the one that caused it. Does Joab sugarcoat it? No. no. <laughs> He's pretty blunt, blunt because you love those who hate you and hate those who love you. For you have made it clear today that commanders and servants are nothing to you. But today I know that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead, you would then be pleased. <laughs> Those are some hard words. Yep. But David needs to hear them. Perhaps, you know, Joab's not a, he's not a politician. He's not an ambassador, but he says what needs to be said. Sometimes it's good to be slapped back into reality. And David kind of was with that, wasn't he? Yep. To say the least. Is is that is is Joab right? If 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 David kept on doing this, would he have oh, an army left? Oh yeah, yeah. No, they would have gone. Oh, they, yeah. they wouldn't have stayed with him. Yeah. Who, yeah. who stays with people if you're not appreciated? And so, what does David do? Takes his seat at the gate. Why is that important? That's where the people meet. Literally, he's yeah. back. He's he's physically, back. he's there. He's back. He's where he should be. Yeah, I'm, I'm back as king. And, I, and I, I welcome you and I thank you and I hug you and we high five and I, I show my appreciation for you laying your life on the line for me and for the king. Yeah. And, you know, we can internalize that too. I think, Pastor, sometimes maybe it's hard to do, but maybe sometimes we've all had to think about being a Joab and tell someone that we're very close to, someone we love, someone that we might be a little fearful of, a spouse or someone and, and, and tell them what truly we feel is the right thing for them to hear. That's a hard thing to do. So I can imagine how hard it had to be for Joab. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Any other thoughts on that? You know, you, Joab's not exactly, he's not a, he's not a saint, <laughs> um, but he has some redeeming qualities. He, yeah. He's where he needs to be when he needs to be at yeah. I was, up and, go ahead, Tom. Uh, I was going to say that he's a military man, so therefore you have to you have to be commanding. You have to have a little bit of a hard edge about you. Say again, please. You have to have a little bit of a hard edge about you. The military. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yep. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Yep. Get right to it. And maybe David, David can be that way, so maybe he appreciated that. He didn't off with Joab's head, though, did he? No, no, no. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> what, where are all the people that were fighting for Absalom? They took off and went back to their own towns. That was at the end of the last chapter. Okay. They took off. They went back to watch the Hallmark Channel because they heard Christmas <laughs> That's that's that's, an, that's those are some verses that were left out. You know, we're not really sure if those are part of the original. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they from? <laughs> Hallmark. <laughs> yeah, the Hallmark translation. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, before I get myself in real trouble, let's 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 turn back to God's word, shall we? And. Uh, <laughs> We're going to read now. We left off uh, that le the second part of verse 15. Eight. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 8. Uh, so 8b eight, eight and read that down to the first part of uh, verse 15a. We have to do b's and a's because once again, as I said, the, the verse numbers weren't part of the original text. They were arbitrarily put in and, and they weren't always put in in a way after you translate from the Hebrew that works as far as sentences go. Hebrew is structured different than English. So anyway, that's why we do it. So if somebody, Al, or if somebody else wants to pick I'll, up. I'll uh, go a little further. Okay. It's titled, David Returns to Jerusalem in my Bible. Yep. Now Israel had fled every man to his own home, and all the people were arguing throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, the king delivered us from the hand of our enemies and saved us from the hand of the Philistines. 
and now he has fled out of the land of Absalom. But Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now, therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? And King David sent this message to Zadok and Abathar, the priest, saying to the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to bring the king back to his house when the word of all Israel has come to the king? You are my brothers. You are my bone and my flesh. Why then should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, are you not the bone and my flesh? God do so to me and more also if you are not commander of my army from now on in place of Joab. And he swayed the heart of all the men of Judah as one man. So they all sent word to the king. Return, both you and all your servants. So the king came back to the Jordan, and Judah became, and Judah came to Gilgal to meet the king and to bring the king over the Jordan. Okay. Anything surprising here? New commander. <laughs> New commander of the army. And who is Amasa? It was Absalom's. Absalom's the commander of Absalom's army. So that makes Amasa what, really? The enemy. A traitor. He, he joined with the one that overthrew David's kingdom. Mm -hmm. However, why do you think David would raise up Amasa? To help unite the, the country, because if he had him as the leader of the army, then maybe the other people that were fighting for his son would Join in. Kind of an olive branch, isn't it? Is, is that what they call today like a reunification yeah. of uh, some compromises? Oh. Here's a thought. How about keep your friends close, but your enemies closer? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of that, too. <laughs> yeah. so, so David's coming back, but is everybody ready to receive him right away? No. Why is that? Well, because they they loved Absalom, first of all. I mean, that was their king. That's who they chose to be king. And words were said, and people talk, and during the conflict, yeah, the same thing going on now in Ukraine when the Ukrainians reclaim part of the land. It's the same thing. And people are the, the people in the neighborhood are saying what? Well, I remember when the Russians came in, you said that. So I think you might be a traitor. He's facing the same thing as we're seeing today. History repeats itself. The people might have bickered over, well, I'm really, I was really for Absalom. No, you weren't. You stayed with David, or no, you stayed with Absalom. So I think he's got a little of that smoothing over to David because the people may have had some infighting over loyalties. So we and we see here there's a division, right? Yeah. There's the 10 tribes in the north, and there's Judah. And this is early on. And, and David, so you know, he will unite them. But Solomon's son, it will split, it will never unite. So there's always been this discord, this kind of disunity, and it's brought together under the right leader, the right king, but it's always ready to fracture and sever. So how does Israel, the 10 tribes, how do they feel about David? What, what's going on amongst them? First line. They're saying some things that are pro-David and anti-David. What is pro-David? Or what has he done that they like? Delivered him from the hand of their enemies. And from the hand of the Philistines, yeah. which Saul was never able to do that. <clears throat> and but uh, what is uh, what's the downside? Well, he he fled. He left us. He left us and let Absalom take over. But now. What happened to Absalom? He's dead. So there's a power back. What are we going to do to fill it? What's the obvious choice? Follow David. Bring David back. David, I mean, it doesn't say this here, but he is the anointed king. He's God's anointed. But is everybody going to be anxious to already make that move? I mean, think back to uh, when our civil war was over. How hard was reunification then? 
Well, some of these people said that we anointed Absalom, so he was anointed yeah. too. But so they were the ones that anointed. Yeah. Yeah. Not God's. Not God. Yeah. But good point. Yeah. Mind. That's a good point. Though. Yep. My question is, where, if David's going back to Jerusalem, where is he now? Is that the gate and all? Gilgal is, is near He's at Jordan. Gilgal? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's crossed over the Jordan. He's not quite back. And what is he looking for? Because he sent messengers, messages to Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, to the elders of Judah. Why is he reaching out to Judah? We know in Israel that it's a mixed bag. There are people that are for him, and there are people that are not quite sure. Well, Judah, Judah is in the territory where Jerusalem was, and Jerusalem was where Absalom was ruling. But what is Judah to David? It's the tribe of Judah, the city of David. It's his, it's his tribe. They should be behind him. David says, you are my brothers, you are my bone and my flesh. Why then you should you be the last one to bring the king back? He's saying, if anybody should be ready to welcome me, it's you. And does that work? <laughs> 14, and he swayed the hearts of all the men of Judah as one man. So they sent word to the king, return both you and your servants. Yep. So the king came back to the Jordan and Judah came back to Gilgal to meet the king and to bring the king over the Jordan. Gilgal is, I think maybe it is on the other side of the Jordan, but that's an important one. Who's going to welcome the king back? Who's going, you know, and, and it's not like they need, David needs all those men to help him cross over, but it's a sign, isn't it? Yeah. We welcome you back, not as the enemy, not as a deposed king, but as the king. You sent us a map last night of, of the, of the uh, to look at for today, and I, that popped in my mind as you were talking about David crossing over the the, uh, 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 the Jordan. There you go. That was that. So I was that was, I, and I don't don't have it in front of me now, but thank you. Yeah. So I was visualizing that map a little bit just to give us perspective of crossing mm -hmm. back in. And there's Gilgal. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It is on the other side of the Jordan. Yeah. So. You see the dotted line or the, the solid line? Yeah. There's Mahanaheim, which is where David was holed up. This little star right here was where the battle was. That's the forest. And yeah, they come over and they cross over. And Gilgal's right on the other side of the Jordan. Does that help, Norma, the visualization there of where you said where he was and coming back in now? So was he, you said he was at Gilgal, but was he at Mahanaheim? Is there Mahanaheim? The one Mahanaheim's up. Can you see the top of the? Yeah, I see where yeah. it is. But Gilgal is on this side of the yeah. Jordan. So yeah, he's actually physically crossed over. But the idea is that some the, the, the people on this side of the Jordan come and welcome him. Okay. Welcome back home. Ceremonial. Moment. Ceremonial kind of thing. And, the, and they went to Gilgal to do that. Yes. But where was he during the war? Yeah. He was up in, here. In, in Manaheim. And they fought not too far away, but remember, he stayed in the city because they said, you shouldn't come. If you die, it's all over. So yeah. he was in Manaheim, mm -hmm. and he was there when he met with the, he sat at the gate that was, it would have been at Manaheim. Yes. Not Gilgal. I believe so, yes. I believe Manaheim was where he was. Okay, so that's not Gilgal. No. Okay, yeah. okay. Good point. Thank you. We needed to clarify that. So he talks all of Judah and, and this area right here, Gibeon and Jerusalem would be Judah and the, and the other tribes to them would be further north up around here. So Judah comes and welcomes him as one man. They're now all behind him again, even though some of those people had been for Absalom, now they're behind David. Um, any other thoughts or questions? What has happened to Joab? He got fired. He got demoted. From what you know of Joab, how is he going to take that? Nah, well. 
Probably not too well. Remember back when uh, when David was anointed king of Judah, but had not been anointed king of Israel. There was Ishbosheth, and uh, there was a and he had his own general, which was Abner. And Abner came to David and said, "Hey, Ishbosheth, he's a he's a bad he's he's a weakling. He's not a good king. We're going to throw our lot behind you. I can talk to all the elders of Israel and I can get them all behind you." And David said, "Cool." Um, you can be a general in my army. And Joy, I've heard about that, heard that uh, uh, Abner had been in town and nothing had been done to him. And so he meets up with Abner on the way back home in a certain city and walks up to him at the gate and puts his arm around and said, hey, brother, congratulations, and gives him a kiss, right? No. And as he gives him a kiss, he shoves the spear in his stomach and kills him. Because Abner's competition. Joab wants to be the general. So Joab doesn't take competition very well, does he? Not at all. Can you foresee problems? <laughs> all right. Any other comments or questions so far? Well, just could Zelda be too that Joab killed Absalom that he was a little upset with Joab? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so far, has he done anything to Joab? No. Demoted he has him. demoted him. Yeah. But he's killed the king's son. So what <laughs> could have David done? Could have killed him. Yeah. Does David really know that Joab is the one that killed him? I would say he more than likely he would find out. Yeah. I think it would come out. In, in scripture, it doesn't say that. But um, as we see, as we read on, uh, David is not always going to take kindly to Joab. So, yeah. I, I, I think that he does find out. Yes. Good question, though. Let's continue on uh, in chapter 19, and let's read the second part of verse 15, uh, where we left off. Um, Actually, I think we read all the way through 15. Yeah. Judah came to Gilgal to meet the king and bring the king over the Jordan. Yep. So you kind of got it backwards there. They brought the king over to the Jordan to Gilgal. Gilgal's on the other side. Uh, so let's read now 16 through 23 of uh, 2 Samuel 19. And Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite from uh, Urim, hurried to come down to the men of Judah to meet the King David. Who is Shimei again? On hey, David's, way, on David's way, way out of town, what was he doing? He was throwing rocks. Yeah. Oh. Here's the rock thrower and the abuse thrower, the right? Thrower. Okay, continue on there, my brother. Verse 17. And with him were a thousand men from Benjamin, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, with his 15 sons and his 20 servants, rushed down to the Jordan before the king. And they crossed the Lord to bring over the king's household to do his pleasure. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was about to cross the Jordan and said to the king, let not my Lord hold me guilty or remember how your servant did wrong on the day my Lord the King left Jerusalem. Do not let the King take it to heart, for your servant knows that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I have come this day, the first of all the house of Joseph, to come down to meet my Lord the King. Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered, shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? But David said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Jeruiah, that you should this day be as an adversary to me? Shall anyone be put to death in Israel this day? Or do I not know that I am this day king over Israel? And the king said to Shimei, you shall not die. And the king gave him his oath. 
Good. So all kinds of people are coming to welcome David, right? On both sides of the river. One of them is Shimei, and we said he's the guy that threw crap and stones and uh, words. And Ziba, remember who Ziba was? He was taking care of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. And Ziba's the one that said, hey, he stayed back in Jerusalem, and he doesn't care about you. I care about you. And David gave him all of uh, what was left of Saul's inheritance. What's uh, Shimei's attitude now as he comes before David? Repentant? Definitely. Yeah. Notice he's bringing with him. How about, what does he bring with him? His children and his household stay. Thousand men from the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, Saul was a Benjamite. Shimei is a Benjamite. So now we have uh, one of the tribes of Israel coming to him. That's a good thing. Thousand men, you could see with Shimei, you could maybe see, maybe be worried a little bit that this is maybe not good. <clears throat> maybe he's coming to confront David, but I don't think, I think there's a lot more on David's side right now. But yeah. And then we have, uh, how does how does this, uh, uh, this guy, um, <clears throat> Abishai, remember who Abishai is? Uh, do you remember Abishai and, and, and Shimei's dealings? Let, keep your finger here and let's turn back to 2 Samuel 16. Let's go back to chapter 16. And if you don't want to turn there, I can put it on the screen. And uh, let's read uh, verses 5 to 11. When King David came to Bahurim, there came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Jera. And as he came, he cursed continually. And he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And Shimei said, as he cursed, get out, out, you man of blood, you worthless man. The Lord has avenged on you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned, and the Lord has given the kingdom into the hand of your son Absalom. See, your evil is on you, and you are a man of blood. Then Abishai, the son of Zariah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zariah. He, if he is cursing because the Lord has said to him, curse David, who then shall say, why have you done so? And David said to Abshai and to all his servants, behold, my own son seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamin leave him alone and let him curse for the Lord has told him to. So how is, how, how, what does Abishai want to do right then? Off with his head? Yeah. Shimei? And now as David comes back, and Shimei comes and he's very repentant, how does Abishai react now? Off with his head! <laughs> David, what are you listening to the apology of this dude, this Shimei? Remember what he was doing to you? Show yourself a leader. Kill him. Take vengeance on him now. Is David ready to do that? No. No. Surprising he didn't do it to Abishai. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, if you want to see revenge, I can show you revenge. I mean, he's a king. Shimei, does he sound repentant? I would say that he did. Yeah. He's scared too. <laughs> it says Abishai, the son of Zeruiah. What that means is Abishai and Joab are brothers. And Zeruiah is related to David. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly how it's his aunt. It's, it's some relation to David. So they're all related. 
But uh, when David said, you sons of Zeruiah, he's not talking just about Abishai. He's talking about Joab too. Both of you guys are troublemakers. Um, what do I have to do with you? What do we have in common? Why do you think I should listen to you? <clears throat> that you should this day be an adversary to me. You're not helping me. Do you want to be an adversary to the king? And there's this, shall anyone be put to death in Israel this day? Well, if we're talking about putting people to death, like you said, maybe we should put you. <laughs> and then there's this comment, for do I not know that I am this day king over Israel? Why do you think he might be saying that to Abishai? Who's king? David. David is saying, I'm king. I don't need you to tell me what to do. I'm back. I'm restored as king. Kind of putting Abishai in his place. I'll decide what's done with it. And then, so how, what does David do with Shimei? What does he say to him? He says, you shall not die. And gave him his oath, which means David's serious about it. You shall not die. Those should be interesting words. And perhaps David is thinking of something that was spoke to him. Let's turn to 2 Samuel chapter 12. And like I said, you can just... Uh, I can turn there pretty clap, pretty fast. Second Samuel 12, um, verse 13. This is after David is uh, confronted by Nathan for uh, murdering Uriah and taking Bathsheba. And uh, he repents. And what does David, and uh, what is said in verse 13? David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. David heard those same words when he repented from the heart, didn't he? And now he gets to say them to somebody else. David had to have been in a good relationship with the Lord at this time to be able to say that. No. And to give an oath to her because he realized that he was at one time in the same situation. Is that true of us? When we realize how greatly we've been forgiven, how should that affect our ability to forgive others? It doesn't always, but uh, it should. I think it's degrees, though. I think. It depends. Like if 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 I've offended somebody, I would probably go to them and I would hope that they would say, "Well, Tom, it's okay." But sometimes that offense isn't grievous. Sometimes you really injured somebody more than just call them by a name or something. you know you insulted them. And, and there's a difference between forgiveness and trust. So if somebody has grievously injured you, you can forgive them, but not trust, trust them. <laughs> and that's a hard thing to do, especially if they've hurt us badly, be it physically or emotionally. It's hard for us. In fact, it's impossible for us to do that on our own. And the only way we can do that is when we realize just how greatly we've been forgiven by Christ for everything. This is what's behind the petition in the Lord's Prayer. Um, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Doesn't mean we're forgiven because we forgive others. It means because we are forgiven so greatly, then we it put upon us. We can, but we should. Yeah. That's, that's third use of the law. That's God's command. Since you've been forgiven so much and the gospel is in your heart, you need to do this. And if you can't forgive somebody else, guess what? You need to ask forgiveness of the Lord for that because you're sinning. Love your neighbor as yourself. Why is that the hardest one to deal with? <laughs> well, I th and, and I think that each one of us have a problem. Oh, definitely. Spell sin? How do you, how do you spell sin? 
S I N, I right in the middle, right? Isn't that what sin's all about? Is I make the I yeah. more important than the him? Yeah. Or the you? But uh, who was it that said that David's right? Yeah, David is right with God. Yeah. He's strong in the faith. Yeah. And I, I think he's remembering back what he was told by Nathan. Change man. Good. Any other comments or questions so far? Let's see if we can get in another section of 19. Let's read verses 24 to 30. And when Fibbleshaft, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, he had neither taken care of his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came back in safety. And when he came to Jerusalem to meet the king, the king said to him, why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? He answered, my lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said to him, I will saddle a donkey for myself and I will ride on it and go with the king. For your servant is lame. He has slandered your servant to, to my lord, the king. But my lord, the king, is like the angel of God. Do therefore what seems good to you. For all my father's house were but men doomed to death before my lord, the king. But you set your servant among those who eat at your table. What further right have I than to cry to the king? And the king said to him, why speak any more of your affairs? I have decided you and Ziba shall divide the land. And Mephibosheth said to the king, Oh, let him take it all, since my lord the king has come safely home. All right, Mephibosheth comes down and meets, and meets uh, David. And how does he look? Unkept. <laughs> and why do you think that is? Because there wasn't anybody to take care of him. Here he was lame and somebody else had run off with all the his wealth and his servants and probably, well, he didn't have children. Do you think, yep, that, that could be part of it. But what also is, uh, was, was he celebrating David's departure? No. It sounds like he was in mourning, yeah. Is that what uh, Ziba told David? Mm -hmm. One that brought all of brought the donkey laden down with stuff. What did he say about Mephibosheth? Look what he's saying, man. He's, he's back in Absalom. Jerusalem. He's with Absalom. He doesn't care about you. <laughs> we got a problem here, don't we? Yeah, somebody lied. Somebody's lying. And uh, as a matter of fact, why does what does Mephibosheth say is the reason that he didn't go meet David? The donkey. The servant took off with a donkey. Didn't help him get on it, took off with the donkey. What is he going to do? He's lame. He said, I couldn't go. But my servant, he went and he deceived you, David. He told you lies about me, took stuff that didn't belong to him, and offered it to you. And is Mephibosheth, is she demanding all of that back? What's his attitude with David? <laughs> Oh, let him take it all, since my lord the king has come safely home. That's pretty, that's something, isn't it? Yeah, because he's just thankful that David is alive and well. So who do you think was telling the truth here? Ziba or Mephibosheth? Yeah, he sure. was telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. He, he always appreciated David's grace and welcoming him to the, to the king's table. Being a uh, Saul's grandson, who was trying to persecute David, trying to kill him. Yeah, he was loyal to David. So David is presented with this problem. What has he done with all the fifth uh, inheritance from Saul? Who did he give it to? Ziba. On the way out of town? Ziba. Ziba. Now he's got two conflicting stories. How does David respond in verse 29? Split it. 
Why speak any more of your affairs? What is he kind of saying? Come on, parents. What is he kind of saying? The squabbling. That's enough. 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 Enough is enough. Now. Here's what we're going to do. You and Ziba divide it. Which, I mean, it, maybe in one way it sounds kind of a cop out, but David promised this to Ziba already, right? He had promised all of uh, Mephibosheth's inheritance to Ziba. What is, what is Mephibosheth looking for? Nothing. He's not asking for it. So Mephibosheth gets more than what he's asking for, or what he expects. And he still gets to stay in the palace and eat at the king's table. Mm -hmm. Mephibosheth's words, do they, there's a famous story by David's son who does go on to rule, Solomon. The wisest man besides Jesus that ever lived. Remember with the, the woman, the women that said yeah, that. Uh, cut the baby in half. Excuse me. Give me Jeff. Yeah. 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 And the and the real mother said, No, let her have it. It's about the baby. Yeah. Not about me. Echoes there, isn't it? Yeah. That's what that's what came to mind when I read it. Comments or questions? Everything going smooth for David on the way back? No, no. No. Oh, I have a question because I'm not good at this stuff. You guys help me. Ziba is younger than Mephibosheth. I believe so, yeah. I think so. It almost, I almost see an age thing there. Like I'm thinking like of an old uncle and a younger, and the older uncle with the long beard is basically saying, let him have it all. I don't care anymore. I almost, almost feel like he's like an older guy talking to a younger mm -hmm. guy. So but I don't know. I just want to, it seems to me like he was a, with the beard and he had kept himself up. But it seems like maybe Ziba might have been a, I don't know. Yeah. Did he not have any family to, to leave an inheritance to because he wasn't married to children? Yeah, so what did that. it matter if he was yeah. living at the king's house and eating at the king's table? It shouldn't have mattered, but how are we with... Oh, well, we're all selfish. selfish. And, yeah. yeah, selfishness, but he seemed to be, yeah. I don't know, just made me think that he was speaking as an older person might say. Yeah. Hey. But the kid have it. That's a good point. It's, it sounds like that, doesn't it? I mean, I'm at a point where yeah, I'm, I'm, at point and I, yeah, I'm at the king, like you said, Faith. I'm at the king's table. I don't need all that stuff. Use that word. I don't need that stuff anymore. Other thoughts? I think it's more that the chef has a loyalty to the king. Ah, I think that's I think, that. you know, he's into the other guy is into things. And money and things and, and even maybe even status. And for me, all I am is I want to be loyal to you as the king. Yep. I'm just happy you're home. Yep. And I'm just happy, happy you're back. Home. And that you're safe. Yeah. Like you said, Tommy, he, some people are more into things. And uh, he. So it sounds as if at some point in time he's done. A, oh, he's. he's gone without and i think sometimes you get to the point where if you have if you've done without it's easy to say i don't need it yeah you you you're the one that's going to be troubled because you have all this stuff <laughs> and i'm speaking for <laughs> No, kind of uh, you know, well, out. a lot of times really rich people are not happy simply because they don't know if people like them for their money or like them for themselves. Or if they even are being liked. And they're yeah. afraid they're going to lose everything all the time. So if you have nothing, you don't have to worry about that. I know my car is going to be there when I come out because who's going to want to steal that thing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, huh? Have you ever had a car stolen? No. You have to. It's a trip. <clears throat> Any other final thoughts or comments? Questions? Jill, how's that pad? Oh, it's empty right now. I guess I didn't do my job then, did I?
Well, you know, the only thing is, as we're going through it, <clears throat> it's like there's, you know, you don't know whether Joab is really out for himself or he's trying to protect David. You don't know if um, everybody's telling the truth or thinking of themselves or. The novel, you just got to keep reading. <laughs> kind of like life, isn't it? Yeah. Like what's going on? It's a show about the world. What's that, Reverend Art? It's a soap opera. <laughs> yeah. Fun life to live. It's, it's a good one, isn't it? It's, isn't it a great story? Soap yeah. opera? They keep your attention? A lot of characters, though. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you, but then if you watch the soap opera, yeah. You... I just wish their names were easier to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd make a whale of a movie, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 It'd be four hours. Oh, Ziva, Ziva. Let's, uh, let's close with prayer, shall we? Gracious God, Heavenly Father, great points brought up here in this Bible study today. We, we sometimes don't know who we can trust. We don't know who's telling the truth. <coughs> People come and they may say they want to be our friends, and we don't know the reason behind that, but you do. Thank God, Lord, that you have befriended us and called us, not because of anything we are, or anything we can do for you, but because of who you are, the God of love. And you've forgiven us so greatly. Move us to be like David, to forgive others, even though they've hurt us grievously. Help us to use your love and remember your forgiveness for us so that we can forgive others, even as we have, would desire to be forgiven ourselves. May this lesson uh, stick in our minds and our hearts and we toss it over and bring us back together again next week to continue on with the saga. Bring those who are part of our Bible study tonight together so we can study your wondrous book of Revelation. And of course, this Sunday, so we can be fed by your word and your sacrament. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. A lot to think about today. <laughs> yes, sir. Blessings on your day. We'll see many of you later on tonight. Tonight. That's right. Bye. Bye, Jill. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Robert Hart. Bye, guys.